Hey, there we go. Now we're live at five. Testing one, two, three, Whiskey Charlie. Okay. Hey, what's going on, world? It's me again, Ethan Smith, aka Big Sarge, larger in charge of my one and only self, taking myself up off the shelf, looking to discover my greatest internal wealth so I can externally explore my best self. What's going on with you today? It is grunt speak, speak grunt, where we come through and we speak to you in a certain way. We have a conversation with you, talk about what you're going through and how we can help you grow through. This is by grunts for grunts. Everybody welcome, but everybody cannot be a member. 11B, 11 Charlie, 11 Alpha 2 for our officer crew. And uh, 0311, you know what you do. And anybody I miss that wear that true blue infantry court, we salute you. So welcome. Happy Father's Day. Let me make sure I get that out the way, even though that's the topic of our sub J that we'll be talking about today. And I also must say happy Juneteenth for my brother and down in the Southern way, because Galveston is where I believe that kicked off on this day even though I'm from the northern states, and I don't think that's something they taught when I was back in uh, elementary school. But now here it is today, 2022, so happy Juneteenth to everybody out there, too. Father's Day with Whiskey Charlie. What's going on, man? I like that beard. I like that cut on you, man. Oh, Slade the Barber got you hooked up over there, don't he? <laughs> hey, yo, yeah, bro. Like, I finally, look, bro, man, after being out of Houston, for like, I don't know, six, seven years, man. I've been looking for a barber. I've been getting my hair uh, cut by a couple other people in around town and finally took an opportunity and uh, saw this guy at a gas station. No lie, got a gas station. He had a fucking cl uh, clean ass cut. And I was like, man, it's a fucking clean ass cut. And he had a, he had a barber tattoo on the side of his head. And it was him, cut it was a picture of him actually cutting his boy's hair on the side of his head. I was like, Bro, that's a clean cut. You cut hair? He goes, yeah, man, hit me up anytime you want to. Man, I hit him up, man. Ever since then, dude, fucking clean his cut. Super <laughs> faded. Super faded. My boy Slade, though. Look, is he in the hood? Well, he, well he's on Beaumont. So, uh, yeah, you, you call Beaumont. Beaumont's, uh, I don't know, now ranked probably, uh, it's over top of Houston and most dangerous cities in uh, Texas. Is he he's white, black, white, black, Hispanic? Bro, I couldn't even tell you. He's he's mixed. I can tell you that much. I I, I don't know what I don't I don't give a shit. Hey, I, to me, I don't give a shit. He's human being. He can cut some good ass fucking hair. I don't give a fuck yeah, what he is. He cut some good ass either. hair. That's what the hell he is. I don't care either. It just, <laughs> I don't care either. I just ask. But looking at that cut and how you look, I'm like, he's definitely in the hood because that's not a damn suburban hot sale boring's cut. They're not doing that at the barbershop in the suburbs. Yeah. Yeah, no. So uh, he actually has got a bus. He just uh, bought a party bus and he's turning it into a barber bus. He's going nice. to be mobile. Man. Right, right now he's doing some mobile cuts here and there, just trying it out. But uh, he's going actually up uh, next weekend. He's headed up to uh, head up to the eight. I mean, up to Dallas to uh, actually compete. Nice. That's dope. Yeah, bro. That's dope, man. That's pretty cool. Yeah, he got you. He got you hooked up, man. I see you posted him on Facebook and everything. It's a whole yeah. new vibe. <laughs> hey, bro. I'm telling you, man. It feels so good to be able to find somebody that can cut your hair, bro. Like. Like you, you like haircuts, and then you really fucking like haircuts, and then you. Because before I go to like again, I'd go around my town right here and get my hair cut by a couple of different people, because it was like, okay, is it a haircut? It's like, all right, that that works, you know. I ain't, I ain't. But when you find that person that cut your hair, it's like, okay, I'm not going to anybody else. Fuck everyone else. I'll wait an hour in line just to get my hair cut by this cat. <laughs> Straight up. You said appointments. I, I do. I hit him up, bro, and he's like, "All right, come on." He, he sets me up, man. Uh, truthfully, like he, he, he's a good guy, man. He, he, he's he's real though. Like he he will straight up if I say, "Hey, I need a haircut this day," he'd be like, "All right, this is your time, man. Come in." That's what's up, man. That's all right. Yeah, 
It is a difficult challenge to find a good barber. I don't really have that issue anymore. But my barber, my barber who cuts <laughs> my son hair, he's still a very good barber, trader barber. And um it's kind of one of those things. I actually found him on Instagram. I actually, yeah, I found him on Instagram or he found me. When I first came back to Texas, I was posting my own Mr. Peen page and he liked some stuff and uh I went and looked at his page and like, oh, this dude a barber. Oh wow, he right here in uh Austin. And I'm like, I need a new barber. So we kind of started communicating back and forth that way. And then I just went to the shop one day, checked it out. I was like, yeah, this is this is pretty dope. So I know what you mean, man. When you find that person that cut you just right yeah. as a dude, you're like, I'm not I'm not going to everybody and letting them play in my hair. That's like you don't just go to everybody and let them play with your car. So it's the same yeah. type of thing. Yeah. Hey, not only, not only that, the homeboy hooks it up by with a straight razor. Straight raises the beard for me, cleans me up, everything, bro. Like nobody else touches that straight razor, man. I, I, look, I don't trust a whole lot of people with a straight razor to your face or around right. your throat, cleaning clean it up, right? You don't trust a whole lot of people doing that. Listen, man, I trust some boy. Like he did that first time. I, first time I was like, okay, huh? <laughs> Be like, you have to. And this is just me. It's Juneteenth too. I need to. You have to go to the hood or somebody from the hood to get those type of cuts. You just have to. Like, hey, that. bro, straight up, man. Hey, look, you can't you can't find a barber like that, man. Like you go around these days, man, and they're like, oh, we'll, we'll help you out, man. When I tell people I want a zero, I want a zero. I want it skin. When I tell them skin, they give me a zero or a one on the side. I'm like, no, I want I want skin. I want to feel the skin. It's actually what's sad is this is just like maybe. Not even, I think it's like four or five days now since I got my haircut and it's already grown this much back. But my homeboy's gonna hook me up because uh, I'm going on vacation after uh, next Friday for 10 days. And uh, for 4th of July, he's gonna hook me up with an America flag on the side of my head, bro. I'm getting nice. it. It's going down, baby. Nice. <laughs> Boy, Whiskey Charlie is gonna be rocking the USA. Nice. Are you, are you going anywhere? Y'all doing anything as a family? Yeah, actually, we're going to go up and uh, meet up with my family, my part of the family up in uh, North Carolina. Y'all going to see popcorn? No, no, not that part. <laughs> <laughs> not that part. No, I'm uh, my mom's side. So, hey, man, uh, I mean, I, truthfully, it's probably been, I want to say four Three or four years since we've all seen each other at the same time with all of our kids, so, and not all the kids have met each other. So, man, it, it's it, that's what's up, man. I, I would say if, if we go into talking to what we usually talk about, one minute win, one minute war. My win right now is taking ta personal time and uh, visiting my family. Uh, it's something I've been looking forward to for years right now, uh, and be able to go out and just enjoy myself and get away. Uh, so that, that that's my uh, that's. Man, that that I'm 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 stoked about it. I think that's what I'm excited about the most right now is vacation coming up. Be able to spend time with my uh, my girls, my wife, and then my family. Uh, I don't get to usually spend time. I mean, they're they're about 22 to 24 hours away from me. Uh, so we're we're gonna meet up in North Carolina, which is still a 17 hour drive for me, and it's only like a five or six hour drive for them. But uh, I don't care. Like, hey, time. That time right there it is worth every – that drive is going to be worth every penny. I probably can make that a straight drive. That's what's up. So let me – yeah, thank you for reminding me. Um, one minute man, one minute win, one minute war. I got your win. You got anything you war with? <laughs> man, yeah, yeah, I – Hey, look, bro, straight up. Warren, I would say Warren with right now. I mean, it's probably not a lot to a lot of people because they probably don't understand, but I, I'm Warren with fucking uh, work right now. <laughs> and what I mean by Warren with work is, man, we're in inventory mode. If you understand what inventory is at work, uh, Home Depot, it, it's only like once a year, man. And, but it's, it's full on. They black out the entire month and everything else. And they, they come in and they count everything in the store. And it, it is very very important to assistant managers that it goes well because that that uh that 
goes until uh, our uh, bonus for work and stuff like that. But not only that, it uh, just shows you how well you're running your business as a, as a, uh, as a, as a team. So, uh, I mean, I think uh, since uh, after today, actually, technically after I got off today, I've worked uh, – I've worked an entire month with only four days off, one day a week in the last month, one day a week. So it, it's rough. That, that's my war is, man. I'm just uh, uh, trying to keep from uh, getting tired. I'm, I'm, I'm getting exhausted. Uh, my war is that uh, it, I'm, I'm losing myself. When you work that much, not only do you lose a battle with at work, but you're also losing a battle at home because your, your, your temper, your, mentality is just you're exhausted and you don't have a whole lot of time for minimum. I mean, it, it could be the smallest things. I know we always battle the smallest things every day, but whenever you're exhausted and you're full on, like you just want to come home and just relax, kick back. You don't want to do anything. But at the same time, as a, as a father, I've still got to find that, Hey, you know, you got to time yourself and be like, look, look, I'm gonna take a 15, a 30 minutes to an hour to myself. But, Find that time for your kids because they see everything and, and then those emotions will change every day. Every minute, every second matters. So you your attitude will change them in any different time. Powerful. That um, is 100% at the end, especially what you close with. Your attitude... <clears throat> You can change it at any given time, and they, and they basically what you're saying they watching you. You know what I'm saying? And when you work so much, or when you're doing so much as a father out of the home, instead of being with your family and being able to be yourself with them, it does change you emotionally. It changes you spiritually. It changes you physically in some shape, form, or fashion. It can change you negatively, or it can change you for what it looks like positively. But then you still could be broken in that physical way. I mean, in that mental way. You know what I'm saying? So. Oh, yeah. No, you definitely can. I think the biggest thing, though, to me is also is that uh, a lot of us and I, I ain't saying that it's every single person, but uh, I know a lot of people that uh, like myself, uh, you notice it, though. Uh, that's the biggest thing is if, if you can notice it, if you can capture yourself in a moment and realize what you're doing in situations when you're getting home, you're like, holy shit. I just went off the script. I'm yelling. I'm screaming. I'm getting loud. I'm, you know, this, that, and the other, you know, that instant moment, you've, you've got to catch yourself and realize, okay, look, I need to pump my brakes. Look, I'm going to take a step outside, take a breather, take a, take a moment to myself and be like, Hey, look, I'll be right back, baby girl. You know, I talked to my daughters. Hey, look, that daddy's just frustrated with work and this, that, and the other, get daddy a minute or so and daddy back inside and play. Right. And, and, and until you until you can recognize that point, is that's where I think it, it's, it's hard for everyone. You're not recognizing because you're you're thinking about you're, you're trying to cool yourself down, but and you're reacting to what your heart and your mind is feeling at the time, and your heart and mind is tired, so you react with that. What you need to do is, if you got to take a long drive home, take an alternate route, take a long drive home, decompress yourself, realize. You know, hey, I'm about to head home. You already know, like I, I like you. If you have seen my Facebook page uh, here recently, and I and I talked about being a father, right? I think one of the biggest things to me is is that what I enjoy when I come home is my daughter's running out to me, screaming "Daddy," and giving me a hug and giving me a kiss, and then talking about me about how their day was, pretty much, and everything else. You know, and and realizing that, and also realizing, you know, how. I react when I step into the house. If I don't decompress, take a long route, maybe take a stop and take a minute to myself and actually think about what I'm actually uh, when I come home. And it's, it's going to happen. Your kids love you no matter what. Those kids are going to come out there no matter how you're feeling. They don't know how you feel, but you got to come in and have your mind right. You got to have your mind right for them because they look up to you. And if you react in any other type of way, that's how they're going to spawn. And that's how they're going to feel every time. It doesn't matter how many times you come in happy and cheerful. If you come in one time pissed off or you come in one time, you know, aggressive, they're also going to see that. And they're also going to be sometimes not excited, not as so much exciting, excited about seeing you. So you've got to find that moment on the way from 
work to home to take that moment to yourself and decompose. Yes, please don't forgive my infantry brother. I think what he meant to say is decompress. Please hey, don't, decompose, hey, yeah. don't decompose in the car. It's hey, like look, there's a reason why I was hey, hey, hey. There's a reason why I was infantry, motherfuckers. No, <laughs> that as I score no, was here's, here's the thing, brother. Trust me, I I consider <laughs> myself. I consider myself a, a professional speaker by the way of speaking is a craft that I'm pursuing and I've been paid for speaking before. And I've taken words and I've mixed them up a thousand times over. So I'm just, I'm not poking fun. I'm just giving, I'm just giving yeah. you a hand. I appreciate it. Exactly appreciate it, Big Sarge. Said, brother. Thanks for looking out. I, Thanks for I, looking I out, Big myself. Sarge. I am not hey. poking fun. I think it's better to you know, because you were saying some very powerful things. The point you were making was simple. As as a man, as a father, although you love your kids, you love your family, you love pulling up at home and them saying, welcome home, daddy. In order for you to get that and not really blow off the handle, you have to slow down, stop, go somewhere and decompress. So you can switch gears. You can switch roles. You can go from worker B or assistant manager or you know mr sutton or whatever they call you at work just then however they approach you at work and that mode that you win when you stop somewhere and you decompress then when you get home you can be in daddy mode you can be in husband mode and a lot of times we as men we don't decompress we do just switch from one battlefield to the next to put it in army terms you know, it was like being in the National Guard. You go from a two-week AT to where you running and gunning and you training and you having a good time or whatever, and then you take it up even further. You go to a demo, I mean, a mobilization site because you get ready to go overseas, and now you train and shooting and you preparing for battle. You preparing for war. Then you go home for a break. Then you come back and you really go to a, a battlefield, and then you come back and you never really have time to decompress. You know, so... That's very powerful, even when you when you seriously when you breaking it down to a, a family composition and the makeup, especially with the father. It starts there. It, it, it's like the, the, the drill sergeant in basic training. It started there. He set the example. So, yeah, it's very important that you get that as a father and you really understand that how important your role is and why that's needed. So. I think that was a very powerful uh, topic which you were giving them, and I just wanted to make sure they didn't. Because some people, some people believe it or not, some people just don't be haters, and some people just don't <laughs> turn out bullshit. So hey, I figured hey, I would let you know. Hey, you, I understood what you said. You just used the, you threw the wrong word in there a time or two. So I got you. I ain't Look, at the end of the day, you, brother. Hey, look, at the end of the day, look, haters going to hate. <laughs> to me, look, I, I, it is what it is. Like, hey, I'm not the – when it comes to the things I tell people at work, I may not be the most intelligent person, but I'm going to be one of the hardest workers that you ever fucking know in your life. I don't just give up. Hey, I may not know how to do everything, but guess what? I'm going to damn sure try to do everything I can, and that's what I'm going to do as a father for my kids. I may not know how initially how to raise – you know, my – my daughter, my oldest daughter is six years old, right? I may not have, know how to raise her 100% uh, to what uh, what quote-unquote standards are, but I'm going to raise her to my standards, to what I know, to what is right for her and for us as a family. And I'm going to do the same thing for my 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 daughter, uh, Nova Lee, that's uh, only two years old. So, you know what? I, I don't care what comes. I, I'm going to do what's best for them. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to spoil the fuck out of my girls. Like, I'm going to spoil the fuck of them. I don't give a shit what anybody says. Everybody's like, oh, you ain't supposed to spoil them. No, I'm going to do it because standards, I'm going to set the standards high because I'm motherfucking dad. I don't give a shit. I'm dad. I'm going to set the standards high. If you're going to come in, uh, when you get older and you're going to try to talk to my daughter, you better come with a lot. And you better have yourself fucking in position because I'm going to tell you what, they ain't going to accept anything but the utmost respect that they deserve. Absolutely right, Whiskey Charlie. 
You shouldn't see it no other way. Oh, I don't. <laughs> My book's written. <laughs> That motherfucker already has a title and everything. <laughs> <laughs> that bitch has a title and everything. Don't fuck around. Fuck around and find out. Fuck a, <laughs> fuck a whiskey Charlie's daughter. Fuck around and find out. <laughs> hey, that's a book right there, man. That's hey. a probably a, a New York Times bestseller right there. Because it's a man, time I'll tell that you, man. I hey, 100%. I love being a fucking dad, man. I I enjoyed every moment of time, man. Uh, and I, I look, I want to first of all, I hadn't said it at the beginning, but uh, shout out to all you dads out there as, as doing your best and for everything you do, man. Just keep grinding, you know. Don't give up. I know there's a lot of uh, uh, you know, hard hard times and stuff like that. But uh, if you give up, yeah, you're you're auto automatically losing that battle, you guys. You got to keep grinding, keep. Keep being that dad, no matter who's holding you back, whether it's your loved one or somebody else in the family that's holding you back from seeing seeing your kids. Keep grinding, keep fighting. Do do the best what's for you, because whenever you do the best for what's for you, it's going to be the best for your children. So, hey, hey, you just keep keep doing what you're doing, man. If you're out there grinding, trying to get a job, trying to do what's best for uh, your family by getting a job trying to get off uh get off the ground man keep fighting dude there is no reason you gotta do it for them because i'm telling you they watch you i i come home every day and i see something that my daughters do that i do and i didn't realize that they were watching me when i was doing that shit man hey they are full on watching you and they're gonna do everything you do my girl six years old she can drive my zero turn around the yard without me being on the mower Seeing that just amazes me, knowing that a six-year-old, I didn't learn until I was like probably, I don't know, 14, 15 years old. But she jumps on there because she always sits on daddy's lap, and she wants to just drive around the yard. She wants to be cutting anything like that. She wants to do everything dad does. So next thing they're going to start learning at six and two years old is they're going to learn how to change oil to a vehicle because they're going to learn to take Sound like you were saying they're going to learn how to change some oil and some other things. Is that what you finished yeah. off with, Whiskey Charlie? Yeah. Hey, look, I, I'm, I'm going to teach them how to change oil to vehicles, man. I'm going to start teaching them now, man. It's it's never too early to start teaching them because your well, kids, yeah. they're wanting to learn. They're wanting yeah. to see. Go ahead, Go ahead Big Sarge. You said a few things. You were talking about you know them watching you and them watching you. And 60% of the world are visual learners. So it's really not about, as parents, it's not about what we say anyway. It's about what they see us do. If you want them to have a healthy marriage, then show them a healthy marriage. If you want them to be financially well off, be financially well off. If you want them to live in a decent neighborhood, live in a decent neighborhood. Because it's what they see that's one that is going to help them get to that environment that you want them to be, to be in. You want them to find a good man, be a good man. And the teacher to zero turn at six years old, Siley, and to teach Nova Lee at two years old, this is the time to teach them. Because as Dr. Bruce Lipton said, the, 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 the mind, the subconscious mind is programmed between the ages of zero and seven. That's when the things that we do in our children's life is the most impactful because then you live out the next 90% of your life living out that picture that you've seen in the first seven years. So if you see a lot of arguing and fighting and what maybe feels like poverty or, or without or lack, then that's what you live without. If, if you see a lot of despair, if you see a lot of talking down to or belittled or feeling like you're not enough or not smart enough, then that's what you live like. But if somebody is speaking inspiration into you, if somebody is speaking motivation into you and telling you what you can't do and showing you by doing hard work and doing those things themselves too, like they see you on a zero turn. They see you building the slide to life, you know, zip line that you had up in your backyard. They see you actually building the patio things on the backyard so they see you doing that and you working hard so they have no choice but to expect that in the man and to look for that in a mate and then to do those things so it will be very easy for you to probably teach them how to change oil 
in the car, in the truck, because they could definitely get up under there. So saying all that to say, you know, that's a that's a powerful thing because as a father, we we set the pace for the family. It took me a long time to accept being a father because I was a father young at 17. When I was 17 years old, I had no idea how to be a father or what that looked like. You know what I'm saying? And I didn't get it from my father. I didn't see any real fathers. I was afraid to be a father. I was just 17, bro. No, no excuses. So fatherhood was a journey for me. But now at 45, like, I love it. Like, I love it. Although it drives me fucking crazy. You know, you get all those feelings. Your kids off at school. You can't protect them. You can't watch over them. They go out to the world. My son is 17. Like, I got a son that's 17 with basically dreadlocks. And if you look on the news, young African-American male kids are being harassed by cops. I stay in a predominantly white neighborhood. But it's like, I don't. I don't let those things get to me. I enjoy the fact that I have a son to show him how to talk to people, how to present himself. You know, he's more than a picture that people see. So it's, it's just interesting. I got a 12 year old daughter who's business savvy, a 25 year old daughter who's model artistic, a 27 year old daughter who's artistic, artistic, not autistic, no disrespect, but um, and then an 18 year old daughter. All my kids are artistic, very intelligent. So it's just at this stage of my life, being a father, it's an amazing thing, especially having four daughters and them calling me and just having conversations, you know, no one having any children or being in any abusive relationships. You know what I'm saying? And they value my opinion and having a son that um, who I'm just building and bonding with after some broken time as I was learning how to be a father. So taking him to go play airsoft this morning, watching him put on my old ACU outfit, checking out his AK for the airsoft event, showing him how to work with it, just talking military talk and listening to what he needs to know. You know, and now he's 17. At 17, I was I had my first kid. At 17, for him not having a kid, having sex probably is the furthest thing from his mind. It's yeah. like, man, when you change who you are by showing your kids something different, by working through those obstacles and those hurdles, then they become something different. So, and you saying that and those things that you want for your daughters and what you're going to do by what you present in them and what you want to teach them, they definitely have the ability to learn by you showing them. It's nothing that they can't do. It, it just yeah. really isn't nothing, man. So, on this hey, day, hey, man, it's just great. Yo. Hey, hey look, to me, what also what it comes down though too, it's like, hey, where, where this is relatable to our military career and stuff like that, you know, uh, to me, I felt like, uh, you know, date, you, uh, certain, uh, man, I'm drawing blank right now. Well, draw Sorry, it back Carl. in. Draw it back in the picture. Oh, y'all were like, almost like a father figure type dude. Y'all guys were uh, somebody to look up to, and I watched y'all. I seen what y'all did, you know. Man, and, and y'all always was fucking some squared away ass motherfuckers right there. I, I, I tell you that much. Uh, y'all, y'all, y'all guys I looked up to, and that's what also helped me push myself through to uh, be a better soldier in what I believed, I, what I thought was a soldier, but when I seen y'all guys, like, hey, man, these guys were squared away when they needed to be, and guess what? We had fun, and we still fucked up some shit and still had fun at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> you, right? So, I, I, look, much respect to you, Big Sarge, and uh, to, you know, Sarge Gates, and uh, uh, Sarge Carl, and uh, even Sarge Sifu, man. Sarge Sifu, yeah. man. I look up to that, man. I tell you what, we, we, we got shit done, we got we 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 needed it to get done, but guess what? We also had fun at the end of the day, man. We we don't yeah. we didn't fuck around. We didn't just just to do shit. We went there and had fun and fucked up some shit, and had a good time doing it, man. So I mean, I know I know a lot of our battles out there had their uh their uh you know their big sarge or their you know somebody they looked up to that you know helped them, encouraged them, and stuff like that, man. Uh, don't don't ever be 
don't be that person that doesn't reach out or doesn't uh, speak up and uh, talk about them, man. Reach out to them, man. Uh, like, like I said, hey, Big Sarge, you, you definitely was an influence. Uh, Sergeant Fuentes, man, he 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 was the guy, man. I mean, I, I I tell stories about everybody in our squad. That's that's one thing is. is to everybody, by everybody in our squad to this day, because we always had a good time. I mean, shit was serious. I remember getting fucked up so much time throwing up from getting smoked <laughs> so bad. But you know what? I don't regret it. I would do it again, man. I would do it again if I had the same squad, man. I don't give a shit. Yeah. Fuck. I'll do the push-ups until I fucking day I die, man. Yeah, we we had a pretty we had a pretty tight squad. You know, for me to be a a. Uh, E5 finally, you know, I had been in the team leader position, but to be an E5 and really be in a team leader position, the position I was supposed to be in, especially being an older <clears throat> NCO, but feeling very young and getting along with all the young guys. I think me and Torres was the oldest, old Danny Panties. But it was it was really a great time. And Sifu allowed me and Carl and Sergeant Gates and Dupelo, he, he allowed us to 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 learn how to be leaders you know what i'm saying he 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 gave that us also to relate though that, that's one thing that's one thing y'all did great though y'all related though y'all related and that's one thing i learned and i take to my workplaces you've got to relate yourself no matter what your age just fuck the age age is out man age is out relate and also talk about something other than fucking work right because that's what i do at work man fuck work <laughs> we're here we're doing this all together yes it fucking sucks guess what we're gonna suck it suck it up together guess what we're, we're gonna go through we're gonna have a good time but we're gonna get the job done baby yeah that's it 100 percent. that was always my thing as an nco as much as I smoke people, it was kind of like a parent, man. I'm only doing this because I love you. I, I can't put my hands on you. I can't really. It, it won't I'm going to fucking choke some shit out of people, dude. Yeah, it won't be in my best interest to uh, talk to you and belittle you, but I can't get you in shape. I can help you get in shape with no problem. So I figured why the hell not? You know, and, and you know, for me, I thought I didn't again, man. No disrespect to any of my super patriot brothers, however, anybody want to take it. I didn't join the military because I was super patriot or anything like that, but I was loyal to what I was a part of. And I'm more of a people person than I am an organization and a task person. So, as an NCO, one of my biggest things was taking care of my guys. I knew for me, the only way that I thought to take care of somebody was to get to really know who they were. That's, that's it. If, 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 if I don't get to know who you are, how can I get you to perform? So when we out on ruck marches and I'm saying shit like 12 more miles left after we walk 12 more miles, you're like, this, this fucker is crazy. What is he talking about? We at the end, I can see base camp. But it's like, it takes your mind somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? He's smoking me, but he'll get down here and do the work with me. It's not like it's just, you know. So, and then for me, once you, once you be, once we went overseas and we went to combat together and we kind of went our separate ways after that, you are no longer for me just private Sutton. You know what I'm saying? You were Sutton, but you are a part. Of the brotherhood, you are like my equal, you are my peer, you know what I'm saying? So I never even looked at it as how you could have looked at it as a father figure, but yeah, you were like 7, 18, 19 years old. You were like our baby brother. So once we once you cross that threshold though of going to combat, especially with me, that being my second tour and everything, like yeah, you was on a whole nother level with me. So that's 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 pretty cool to look at it from those two different perspectives. And that's how I that's how I see it now. I forget yeah. our age difference. What are you? 35? Four. So again, we're 11 years apart. Me and DJ Knox are 12 years apart. He's 33. Me and Wolf are about seven years apart. 
everyone that's really close to me with the exception of my buddy Sharon and my boy Nip, they're all about a decade, seven years to a decade younger than me. But they're like, they're my peers, they're my equals because they keep me young. We graduated together in some way, some shape, form, fashion or another. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah definitely, Big Star. Hey, look, when it comes down to it, like, again, it's it's all relatable in some type of way. I ain't saying that you got to uh, train your kids to be military, but at the same time, you know, and also it's also relatable to my work because my boss always says that, you know, uh, they're gonna, everybody's going to stretch you like a rubber band, right? They're going to stretch you to a point that you can't, that you can't stretch anymore and then you're going to snap right but then from that point you're going to learn from that in, from that individual what what that snapping point is and, and the same thing with your kids right you're, you're going to stretch their 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 strength of their mind their physic physicality to a certain point until they snap until they're crying and they're leaning on shoulders like daddy i can't do it anymore or hey hey big sarge i can't handle this shit anymore and from that point you know you're learning learning what where you need to develop the mat, right? And that, and that's how you need to challenge your, also yourself. You know, you gotta find your you gotta find that point of where you go you go to snap. And that's where I've realized again. I talked about it earlier. Uh, my my snapping point is hey, leaving work, take myself away from work. You know, the band is stretched because I am literally at work and I'm stressed out. My band stretched out, and then when I get get to go coming home. I snap because I'm at home and because it's the little things that just break me. So I found that stretching point at where I need to go. You know what? I need it. Whatever the word is, you, you what's, what's the word I'm looking for? I've said wrong so many times Decompress. already. Come on. Decompress, right? I, I find out that that's that point that I need to, you know what? I need to take the longer route home or, Hey, I need to, you know, hey, you know, when I go out, pull, when I go out and get my truck, I'm gonna sit here for about 15, 20 minutes, and then I'm gonna drive home because it's gonna take me another 20 minutes to drive home. Then I'm myself, I'll get myself decompressed, yeah, to get my mind right to when I get home because I know as soon as I pull up in that driveway, no matter what, my girl's gonna come running out to me, and I'm gonna be ready for them mentally and physically to be able to, you know, enjoy. The time with them because time is valuable that my friend is accurate time is very valuable and it's definitely what i like to say it's all about you were talking something earlier and you mentioned something about being in the moment and that's when you really got off into the um the thought process or the rationale or the topic of, you know, taking time to decompress and <clears throat> time, time is of the essence and taking that, that time out for yourself to decompress. It's, um, I think it's an area that a lot of people miss. I think it's the area that a lot of people miss. And when you come home, you come home with the, the frustrations of work. You come home with the frustrations of traffic. You come home with the frustrations of thinking about what you might even do for dinner without just enjoying a moment of getting to go home. Like enjoying a moment of being back home. As, especially as soldiers who've been overseas, who've been deployed, who've been through so much more, so many more stressful situations and harsh environments and just looking forward to the day, no matter what you said in the group of badasses, looking yeah. forward to the day of just going home. Like, Sitting on your couch as a young guy back then, arguing with your girl, thinking you're gonna have sex forever for like that first month you what? home, like it's going down every day, all day. Hold up, wait, there, there's a there's a thing like that. Hold yeah. up a second here. <laughs> yeah, that's what I thought. I mean, I was married, so that's what I thought. <laughs> but 
you just were so excited, you know, to, to go home. And going back to that, when you at home, you need to be in that moment. It's like when you at work, that's the moment I'm in. When I'm in traffic, that's the moment I'm in. But one of the most difficult things for, I think, human beings to do and us to do at times is actually live in the moment because we want to live everywhere else. We want to live in the past. We want to look at what happened at work. What didn't I do at work? What did I do at work? Why did JJ say that like that? Man, what was she talking about? I hope they weren't talking about what I was thinking. Did I do the right thing? Did I count the money right in the safe? All type of stuff. What did the pastor say at church? What's going on in the football fantasy league? Instead of just focusing on, I'm driving home, this car right here, this, let me watch out right here. Let me get here. Boom. Cool. I made it home safe. I, yeah. I got my mind together. I had my time to relax. I listened to my inspiration music. I listened to my country music. I listened to my, my gospel, whatever my get hype is, whatever to put me in a good mood. And now I'm home. And I'm ready to be, you know what I'm saying? I'm ready to enjoy this moment of being home because my wife and my kids don't want to talk about work. My wife and my kids don't want Ethan Smith, Big Sarge, Mr. Peen. They don't want inspiration. They want husband. They want dad. Yeah. You at yeah. home now, bro. <laughs> yeah. Hey, you're right there, Big Sarge. You're right there, Big Sarge. Hey, look. And I took it from you. To, I think one of the last videos we did. I know we've been we have been off for a hot minute right now, but About two weeks on Big Sarge. Yeah, look, I know we've been off for a hot minute, but one of the biggest things I remember one of the last conversations we were having is uh is uh, was about pride and was about uh, what I what what I couldn't do any better. I remember I made that comment, and you're like, "Hey, man." You know, you did the best you could. You know, you, you did everything you could at that moment in time. Just go from there and do better, whatever else. You, you don't want to think about that because from that point, it's like we're talking about here. You don't want to think about that situation, right, how much better you could have done because that's going to even put more weight on your shoulder from that point. You don't want to think about that that situation. You know what? If you know that you can do better, you know, next next day, do the do what you can. Do what the best you can and do it to your best ability. And that's what I took from you last time is like, I've been coming to work. You know what? I'm do. I'm, I'm giving my 110%. You know, if it ain't, it ain't, if it ain't meeting requirements or, I mean, it's meeting requirements, but if it ain't meeting my mental thought requirements of saying, Hey, how much better could I do? I'm, I'm telling myself, you know what? I did everything I could. You know what? That was today. Tomorrow, extra, extra. I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this. I'm going to this way. As long as you're learning and you're teaching yourself, and developing yourself in mentally part, like hey, I could do this 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 much better, then it's it's gonna be a better and better every day, man. So you, you can't beat yourself up over the factor of how much better could I be? You did the best you could. And that's what I learned from Big Sarge this last the last conversation we had, you know, and I take that every day now. You know what? My boss jumps on my ass, you know what? I did the best I could, but you know what? I could tweak this a little bit. I'm gonna do this this a little different tomorrow and I'm I'm gonna reach that goal. So that's how I'm gonna do it. And I, I game plan myself whenever I'm headed into work. So, hey, Big Sarge, I appreciate you for uh, for that last uh, last session we had, man. Uh, it definitely made an impact, and uh, I took that I took that and I went with it, man. And uh, I feel better, uh, even though you know I, I'm working extra lately, so it kind of does put an extra weight on my shoulder from that point. But you know what? I'm I, I did the best I can every day, and I think that's helped me out because I'm literally telling myself. You know, when I leave, I may not have everything done, but I did everything to my ability, to what I came into work to do. And that's what I did. Now, if it doesn't suffice, guess what? You know what? I'll figure it out tomorrow when I get into work. But now I'm going to take myself again, decompress mm -hmm. and focus on what's important to me when I get home. That's and that's my family. Up. That's what's up, man. That's I'm, I'm glad. I'm going to have to go back and watch our last session then. See what it is that the good Lord had me say, because I know that's all it was, but I will definitely go uh, check it out. I think, I want to say, I think I got a look. Was it just me and you? Wolf wasn't on there, was he? Nope. Did you? Yeah. 
I think it was, yeah, I, I think I, I got it a little bit, but I'm going to have to go check it out. I'm going to attempt to make time to. Hey, 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 Big Sarge, because I remember you came on and said, I'm glad you brought up this topic, pride. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, don't take too much pride. And that's one of the things is, I, I guess it's the way I was coming across with it and everything else in pride. Yeah. And, and you broke it down for me. And, and, I, and I, I understood what you were saying with there, right? You can't take too much pride because then, again, from that point, it's, it's taking the focus on off on you or what you need to do. You know, you got your pride. You, it's gonna really going to really – and I think it was uh, – what song was it? I think it was uh, Kevin Gates. Yeah. J. Cole, Definitely. Pride is the Devil. Yes. yes. <laughs> I think it was last one or the one before that. And we talked about that, man. Uh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> man, like, like again, I went back and, and, you know, at first, first when you're talking to me, I was like, man, make sure I don't know what the fuck he's talking about. <laughs> man, fuck this guy. Like, man, come on. Like, but then I thought about it and I started doing it. Like, man, your pride is, is right here, man. It's, it's in your heart. You, you're going to do everything you can possibly every day you go to work if, if, if you go into work and say Look, i'm getting my 110 percent today that that's my pride man that's my pride i'm gonna come in and give my 110 percent now it, it it may not be that uh, i mean that pride that you're saying hey like like i was pretty much describing it as pride is and i'm gonna give up every fucking thing my pride now is after we again after we had these conversations after you talked to me my pride is <laughs> My pride is going in and saying, you know what? I did it. I did what I wanted to go into work today. I did everything to my best of my capabilities and my, my associates' capabilities and supporting them. You know what? I'm riding home happy. I don't give a shit what anybody else says or what anybody else thinks. That's the biggest thing, though. You, you've got to stop thinking about what everybody else thinks. We, we were talking about earlier, you're talking about people and uh, yeah, you're talking about June Juneteenth, you know, you know what people what people see and what people think on things, right? But you, you've got at the end of the day, man, you you've got to do, you've got to do you, man. You got to be what's pride in you. I mean, it's man. I had several associates come to me, and it wasn't just one race, two race, you know, whatever else. They're like, Justin, what is Juneteenth? Like, what is Juneteenth? That they're asked, I told them I'm not a hundred percent, but what I have heard and what I've learned from my fellow Americans is it's a, the official day of freedom for my African American brothers. So slavery was when it was denounced. What is it, 1865 by Abraham Lincoln? And I'm gonna jack it up too, but this okay. is the way I understand it. So shout out to all my. African American black people, if I got this wrong, correct me in the comments. Or if not, don't say nothing if you ain't got nothing good to say. Or Big Sarge, you go that way with you. But anyhow, Juneteenth, June nineteenth, I believe is eighteen sixty five or eighteen sixty seven, and I'll Google it and look it up real quick. But what it was was that was the day that they they the Northern Army came down to Galveston, Texas, and forced the the Texas army or the army to surrender the slaves like Abraham Lincoln had freed slaves two years prior to that. But the word didn't get down to Galveston, Texas slaves until June 19th. That's why they call it June 19th because that was their okay. actual their freedom. So up North, when I was in elementary school and me and my wife talked about this, I don't even recall even graduating high school in around 1995 or being in school at that time frame, I don't even recall them mentioning Juneteenth. Not that I was a rock star student that I, you know, I paid super attention to that thing either, but oh, even in on. Black History you, you Month. know you were a big Sarge. I, you, you look like an intelligent guy. Come on. I am. I'm very intelligent, <laughs> but I also was a, a, a big time jerk because I was in, in a lot of, uh, what do you want to call it, heartbreak during a time for my parents separating. So I just was a rebel. And acting okay. out and everything and anything to, you know, stop from being intelligent. But anyhow, so, yeah, that's how I understand Juneteenth. My wife had read it to me earlier, but I gave you the Big Sarge version of it. That's really what it was. It's like saying we was in war in Iraq and then everybody went home. And two years later, they came to our, our what's the name, our combat outpost and told us that the war was over. 
that we're supposed to have been gone home already? That's what it would be. Hey, before I forget, I got to read some of these comments. I, I was about to just say that, Big Sarge. I'm <laughs> glad you said that. I was like, bro, I know hey. somebody's saying something out there. Yeah, they, they, we got a number of them. Thank y'all for rolling with us and just let us go back and forth and do our thing. Make sure you speak in two grunts and you definitely speaking down here in the comments. And we appreciate that. And I forgot to ask you earlier today to share this video with three, four people. Send it their way. Let them know we're doing good things over here and we're going we to keep on bringing it to you. But let me get in these comments, see what they had to do. So McGinnis started us out earlier today. We'll keep rolling. And uh, I, I, I gave it right back to him. You keep rolling too, my brother. You know, I just figured he was saying, keep going, keep moving on. Then he said, change a tire. He lost me with that one. But hopefully you ain't have a flat and you had to change a tire. But, hey, we got to keep it going. Hey, hey, Nova Lee and Siley. How you doing, ladies? I like your outfit. You got the black and white flag on with the black and white pants. I like it. That's cute. <laughs> so uh, they, know that, they, know, they know that 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 dad's favorite outfit, their army outfit. So uh, nice. they rock it out with uh, sport daddy today. I can see that. Nice. Christian Dyke say sorry. Rolled in late with the wife. What's going on, Chris? Good to see you on here. Happy Father's Day to you, Fair Jean. Appreciate that, brother. McGinnis said, yeah, definitely happy Father's Day. Absolutely, indeed. Happy Father's Day to you, brother. Uh, Sergeant FJ said, can you believe a young 17-year-old FJ had dreadlocks? Wow. I need to see a picture of that, Sergeant FJ. Drop Please it in, FJ. Below. Drop it in. Drop it Drop in. It Come it on. In to the chat box or go to the uh, Grunt Speak group page and drop it into the chat box, the, the DM box. Sean Connor, what's going on, brother? He said, happy Father's Day, gentlemen. Continue to inspire others and open minds. You guys are the best. Thank you very much, Sean. We appreciate that, brother. How you can help us to open those minds and share, share this video with two or three people you know, whether they are me or not. Just share it to them anyway. Let them comment back on our page. Charlene, what's going on, Miss Charlene? Michelle, happy Father's Day to you both. You inspire me more. I mean, more than you know. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Much love and respect from you and your husband. Christian Dykes, lost my dad this year. He dropped out of high school to go to Vietnam, same as my uncle. That was only 15. I lost them both this year. Sorry to hear that, my brother. Sorry to hear that. You sound definitely a great man to follow, especially dropping out of high school to go serve our country and him and your father. And I know you as a great leader during your time as well. So I know you'll keep doing a legacy proud, man. Now they just fighting that different fight, that eternal fight, that spiritual fight, which we all in anyway. God just called his soldiers home. So we got to be grateful and cheerful for the days that we had them here, brother. Keep fighting. You know we with you. I uh, had to smoke people as an officer, candidate, candidate, attack officer, but it was all out of love. Yep. Hey, man, smoking people is like whooping your kids. This is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you, but I want to make sure we both enjoy ourselves while we get it done. I'm <laughs> Smoking somebody is like a rite of passage in the military, too. I don't know where we was at, but Christian Dyke said, hell yeah, Whiskey Charlie, you was talking about something powerful. Big Rinka, Big Yeti, he said, what up, brothers? Hope all you had a happy, fa a good Father's Day. I never heard of Juneteenth two years ago, and I love American history. Yep, trust me, and I'm an African American barber. I mean, brother myself, African American barber, because I see Slade the barber down here. I'm an African American brother myself, and I um I had never heard of Juneteenth, so it's it's interesting. I don't get wrapped up in the political political part of it. I respect it, and I keep on driving on like any other holiday. I don't get wrapped up in too much detail of it, or I don't go too deep into it. I just keep on doing what I need to do. 
All right, here's a question that I had for you. Seeing that this topic was about Father's Day, and I had a question for you today. What is what do you believe in, if you can sum it up? The role, responsibility, because I know we uh we we running out of time, so I want to get these two questions in for you real quick, Whiskey Charlie. And y'all can drop this down in the chat below, and uh we stay a little bit late, that'll be cool. So Today being Father's Day, if you had to sum up what the role of the father, the responsibility of the father, man, it's so much, it's hard to wrap up in there. What would you say the role responsibility of a father is from the age of uh, 17 or 25? The wrong responsibility role, role. to your child from 17 yeah. to 25? At your father between the age of 17 or 25, what do you think his mindset is of his role is as a father? I know. I would say you. communication. I would say communication. I would say communication with, with your uh with your uh, child, you know, uh, and also uh, and just communication and understanding. Uh, and uh, the what reason I say uh, communication is the, probably the biggest key is, you know, you got to communicate your perspective on things, but you also got to listen. Though I think that's a big thing, though, too, is listen. Because if you're not listening to what your uh, child is saying, whether it's a he or she, if you're not listening to what they've got to say, they're explaining to you their issues, and it, and especially you being more experienced and you being the adult, they're not going to understand. Especially if you start like going straight from zero to a hundred real quick, right? You've got to explain the situation. Now they're going to learn on their own. At the end of the day, all of our children are going to learn on their own. I, I, my girls, they're going to learn on their own, right? I, I'm gonna I'm going to coach, teach, and train, develop them to be the best woman that they can be. But what they take from me and what they see from me and what they go with, it's going to be a whole different thing, but it's all how you approach the situation, whether they speak to you about it again. It's all about your approach, right? If you approach and you explode, I can guarantee your child will not speak to you the way that you want them to speak to you. And I ain't saying they're going to come across aggressive or whatever else. You're going to demand whatever else, but they're, they're going to hide more shit from you. But if you come across to them and, and, and you speak to them and to a manner where they understand and be like, hey, man, look, check us out. Look, hey, this is you. Hey, learn from it. I, yes, I'm going to support you to a certain extent. But, hey, you're going to learn. But you got to listen. You got to listen to them. I'm, I'm going to let you know that much. As me being only just, again, I'm only 30. 34 years old, but I can tell you this much. Uh, my mom, my mom did it really well. And my dad, you know, coached, teach and trained me the best he could uh, and, and through my life, of what I've lived so far. And I think I've done pretty well, but you know, you've, you've got to listen to your children and then uh, set, set examples by what you do. I looked up to my dad. I looked up to my mom and seeing them, my, my mom, five kids, five kids and she worked two or three jobs to support us all. And she still, you know, it, it might not met everybody's standards, but you know what? I'm appreciative of what she did. She fucking worked her ass off to give us everything that we pretty much what she could support us with. Right. And my dad taught me, of course, how to fucking work like, Hey man, Hey, he always told me, and I still tell people at work to this, to this day, they're always asking me, Justin, why are you always 45 minutes to an hour earlier to work? Because I leave an hour hour plus early to work. Because my dad always told me, if you break down the way to work, you walk your ass to fucking work. And that, that's one of the things is, is I, I take from that, you know, and I want to, I ain't ever going to expect my daughters to walk to work, but I want them to understand how important it is to get to work and how much it, it, it is to get to let me, work. Let me ask you this to... question. Let me ask you okay. this question. Okay. You are an, an amazing 
worker. And, 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 and this is, I guess, do you desire to be an amazing boss or an entrepreneur? Oh, yeah. Hands down. Like my biggest thing cool. for me. Yeah. My biggest cool. thing for me is I want people to be better, if not more successful than I am. So what I'm would be what what what's next? What will you be the boss of? What's what's the dream? What is it that 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 you want to do? that you're willing to work for just as hard or harder than you're working a Home Depot for, that thing that wakes you up in the middle of the night, that thing that you show up an hour early for, you find yourself doing. Like, what is that? Have you started thinking about that yet? Because, and, and I know you have good values of working hard and being an old-fashioned American manly man. And and this is no disrespect, but now we're we're a new fashion of American man too, and we have to be a more strategic thinking man because women want more more time and more real intimacy and more real connection and like you said, communication, and we want to be there with our wives and build those relationships and not just working and providing. We were talking about that earlier time, so. My question would be, what is it that you want to do to where you can, you know, eventually once you retire from Home Depot, if you stay that long, like what next? What what next? You know, hey, look, what's what's next for me? Is, again, look, what's next for me is to make sure that I like after I retire, like I. Truthfully, I don't think I ever will retire. Like, I will retire and I'll probably go, like, I'll retire from Home Depot as whatever position I'm in. Like, I, I want to go as far as I can and I, I'm going to shoot for the stars on it. But once I retire, seriously, I'm going to go back to probably fucking work. And truthfully, at the end of the day, but what I'm looking forward to is trying to see what what my daughters, where they're going to go and how I can support them even more. Because again, like I told you, like I was saying before, my biggest thing is I want to support whether, like, I, I made a little joke today on my uh, my text messages to my other uh, peers. You know, that they asked me, like, hey, they told me, hey, happy Father's Day. I was like, hey, I appreciate it. I'm here with my stepchildren. Right? I, I made a little joke like that, right? And I only meant that as in like, hey, you know, I, I work a lot of a lot of hours. I work excessively, probably at, at times. But you know what? I want to see my associates and my first of all, I want to see my kids see how hard I work to get where I'm at, to, to get what we have. But also I want my associates to see how hard I work and see where I'm at to get where they want to be or if they want to go higher than me, where they need to go. And what they need to do. Yes, there, there, there's ultimately at the end of the day, there's going to be sacrifices that you're going to have to make and decisions you have to make. But that's going to be your decision as an individual. But I'm, I'm going to do what I can do to support my family. My wife thanks me every day, and I, I don't see, I, I don't see why she's thanking me. Truthfully, I, 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 I work excessively. Some, sometimes eleven. To, hell, from Sunday to Monday last week. I work 19 hours, 19 hours, a 19 hour shift. And she's like, you know, Justin, like, I know it was rough on them because they didn't get to see me a whole lot at all. Cause I turned back around after I got out, off, but I went into work at, that morning at, uh, on Sunday at 10, 10 o'clock. Didn't come back home until 6 a.m. on Monday morning. And then turned back around and went back to work on 4 p.m. and worked until 11 at night. And I, you know, I was, I was sitting there hating myself because I'm like, dude, I didn't get to spend any time with them. But my wife came to me. It's like, you know, I appreciate everything you do. And, you know, I it, it was, you know, at that moment that I realized, go ahead. I think what you're doing is a great thing. But my disconnect comes at I'm such a high, I'm such a right brain person. I just don't see me and working for somebody for the rest of my life a thing because I've been behind the veil and I know how much you love your family 
And what and, and my my attempt, my, what I'm attempting to do is get you to look at it from you not that Home Depot is a bad thing. I take my hat off to you for what you do as a husband and a father, how you provide for your family. But I think you also want to have more time with them to really show them what you want. So my question then becomes, okay, what is it that you would do besides work for Home Depot or to give you more time with your family and allow you to get paid doing it? What would that be? Maybe it's not in the next five years. Maybe it's not in 10 years. You know, in 10 years, Siley will be 16, Nova Lee will be 12. So maybe it's in 15, 20 years when they get ready to go to college. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't know. So that that that's just my, my question right there because you already, again, between... Okay. C go ahead. So, so the, I, I, would, I, I, see, I see what you're saying there, Big Sarge. To me, the value... Well, not value. I wouldn't even say value. To me, I guess the perspective or what they see from me is like... God damn, God damn me. Man down, man down. Man. Hey, you better watch out. But it's damn fucking, I, I'm like honey baby right here with this new haircut, you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the bees no, all fall my me. ass. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, look, look, but no, for real though, like, look, man, uh, look, I understand what you're saying there. Like, you know, I, I, I really don't plan on working the rest of my life. I really don't. And, uh, but I also understand, I want them to understand that they, uh, you, you just can't, to me, that, that to me, retirement's a stopping point is saying, Hey, I'm done. Like, don't get me wrong. Like to me, truthfully, I think retirement age should be definitely a lot fucking earlier than what, what right now it is. I see people working 60 at the age of 60, 65, 70 years old. Cause they said they can't retire because they don't make enough. Right. That's the cost of living. You know, and right now where we're at as as the United States, uh, as America right now, the cost of everything is up. The inflation's up, up the fucking ass. Here's, People are going to be working. They're going to try to be working until they're fucking 80. Here's a question. Here's a question. Here's a thing, Whiskey Charlie. And okay. this, goes for, this goes for you and me and anybody on this podcast. If you're only living based off the way the government is telling you to work in using a 401k or waiting on retirement or a pension and you don't have investments or anything like that you will you are definitely assuring yourself to work into your 60s and 70s if you have the financial understanding and financial literacy of the average person that gets a, a, a regular paycheck. That that's just the way the system is set up. That's just what it is. You and like you said, these people don't want to retire and go back to work. Here's the thing: I never want to retire if I'm a speaker, and this is what I love doing. I can get paid to do this to the day I die. Warren Buffett is almost 90, 90 years old, probably. He's still trading stocks. That's what he loved to do. Bill Gates is like 70. He's still doing computer stuff along with other things. So for me, I don't think those people want to do that. But when, you, when you've when already made, say, like you got 12 years of plus in at Home Depot, it would be crazy for you to just jump off the ship and walk away if you can retire at 25 years. No, now you just use the job to build the dream. You just have to know what the dream is, what that is you want to build. Nobody would say just up and leave your job. That's the type of stuff Big Sarge do. I'm wild and crazy like that. God keep blessing me. But it's other ways to do those things, you know? So when you you can retire from officially working for somebody at any age you want to. Hey, girls. But you never have to stop working if work is something that you enjoy doing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I whiskey Charlie got to say good night to the girls. Got to give the girls good night kisses because this is it's a late night. There you go. Yeah, yeah, like definitely. Eh? But uh, no, I, I see what you're saying there, Big Sarge. I see what you're saying there. Uh, I, I mean, I I guess my my mentality is is that. Uh, <laughs> 
I get, you got to you got I mean, What, what I've learned from, from my father, I know, my dad and my mom is there's there's no retirement age. There, there yeah. ain't, and that's what I've learned, and that's what's instilled into me. I think that's the biggest thing. Is I think also with me is also, uh, you know, uh, raising my kids to understand like. I think one of the biggest thing is, and I've said it through several videos before, is understanding the need, the difference between needs and wants in your life, right? And if you can establish that, you can also establish yourself from having to work the rest of your fucking life, right? You know, everybody needs a fucking house, a car, and stuff like that, right? But it doesn't have to be like everybody always tell me I have a beautiful house, I have an amazing house, right? I love my house, I love what I have. I love the vehicles I have uh, and everything. Uh, people can talk shit on me all they want. My, my house is only 1,600 square feet. And everybody's like, oh, I got like a 2,000 something square. I sit here looking at other people that have like, they're building homes, like three, 4,000 square foot homes. Why do you really need a three to 4,000 square foot home? What do you need? You need something to shelter you. What, what, the vehicle that you get back and forth to work, right? Do you really need to get back and forth to work with a fucking Lamborghini or a fucking Maserati? Whiskey, no. Whiskey Charlie, it's, fucking because, it's because, again, they, they've they bought into the system. You said your parents said there is no retirement age. There is no such thing. You could look at that either way. They said you basically work till you drop dead. What the hell is retirement? Or you could say there is no retirement age. I can, I can stop working at 21 years old because I invented something, created something. I'm working in a different way, not a physical way. You know what I'm saying? But those individuals who bought into that, I got to retire at a certain age, also bought into, I could go have a 3,000 square foot home, even though I only make $5,000 or $3,000 a month. Why? Because they gave me Three hundred thousand or four hundred thousand dollars worth of credit. They don't care if I can't pay for it. And if you don't understand that, and you've talked about yep. this several times, and Rinka just mentioned it down here, they're going with their wants over their needs. It's like yep. me and my wife talk about. As people get older, I worked in a moving furniture business and a Sears delivery business for quite some time, and I never understood as people got older why they would go buy brand new homes and bigger homes. Mainly it was Caucasian people. It wasn't really too many African-Americans. It was some Indian uh, ethnicities. And I never really understood that, why they would do that. Like when I get older, I want to downsize. But then from a financial standpoint, I begin to learn that, okay, you setting these things in place for your family, maybe life insurance. This is going to take care of somebody financially. From that standpoint, I get it. But as I get older, I tell my wife, we downsizing. I'm not looking up. We only live in two rooms anyway. The bedroom, the kitchen, the bathroom. I don't need all that. So yeah, people definitely live outside their means. Also, Rinko said, um, can be done. Don't live beyond means. Put away funds, rather 401, invest or savings. Sacrifice young to live, sustain, and enjoy later. You're absolutely right. It can be done. I'm not saying it cannot be done by anybody, but it's a, I believe, I believe, just eat the Smith Big Sarge. I believe that there's a, a very small percentage because, as I stated in there, a lot of people don't understand financial literacy. And it's like Whiskey Charlie was saying they go get a house bigger than what they can afford. They're um, borrowing from their 401k, they're not investing anything. And we're really just living hand to mouth. So, yeah, it definitely can be done. You just have to have the right setup when doing it. Uh, Rinka said exactly. Whiskey Charlie needs over once and credit can kill you. Believe me, laugh out loud. You know, credit can kill you. I think um, definitely can kill you. But you have to in a society that we live in. I believe that learning how to use debt, learning how to use credit is how you win because we live in a society that's how many hey, trillion dollars in debt? What is this? Hold on. What's that? That? Hey, big Sarge, I was about to say the same damn fucking thing. Look at America right deficit. now. Deficit. Hold fucking... on. What's that? I know we a couple trillion dollars in debt. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
you have some motherfucking A's and fucking debt. Why do you think that we're in a fucking pretty much a recession right now? Because we we borrowed so much fucking money. We're giving money out like it's fucking candy. U.S. national debt is 30. I'm going to hope I'm reading this right. I don't know, man. 30 mil, 30 trillion, 527 billion, 229. Who, who, whoever knew they had that much fucking money? <laughs> God damn, 30 trillion. Man, get the fuck up out it's of here. It's not. But here's the thing, man. The the U.S. dollar isn't, isn't backed by anything. It's all backed by debt. So again, I know credit cards can kill you, and that's what they base it off of. They give you credit cards especially at 18 and they hit you with this high interest rate banking on you to be able to pay that back. That's how they making their money off of you. But if you smart and you listen to guys like Grant Cardone and I don't know, maybe even Dave Ramsey, he talks about paying off your debt, but Grant Cardone and Robert Kiyosaki and guys like that, they talk about, you know, using debt to your advantage, having a, having a purpose for your debt. When you go get a $30,000 loan, have a purpose for that debt, you know, not just to go on a damn vacation, be buying a, a, a Hey, a leave my vacation out because I deserve that shit. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't talking about you. You earned that from Home Depot. <laughs> <laughs> hey, man. <laughs> I heard you talk about my vacation next year. I'm going to stop that real quick. You got it. Oh, shit. He he said he'd be right back. Hey, you guys. (laughs) Man. Hey, hey, you guys. My homeboy Slade is on with the cleanest cuts in southeast Texas. Make sure you give him a shout if you're in around town, man. He'll be up in uh, Dallas uh, next weekend. So make sure you give my homeboy a shout. For the freshest cuts in Southeast Texas, but outside of that, you guys, hey man, this uh, this debt thing we're talking about, man, man, you, you've got to uh, really uh, balance balance on uh, really the difference between a need and a want in life, right? We always go, we're always going to find every, we're going to think about everything we want in life. But we're not ever going to think about what we just really need in life. You know, you, you really got to balance those two. Once you balance the needs, it will take care of what you want in life. So you've got to take care of what you need in life to take care of what you want in life. It, it will ultimately, at the end of the day, you take care of the needs. It will take care of your wants in life, man. Your needs will take care of your wants, man. You got you got to start slow. You got to baby crawl that shit up there, right? You know, you're never just going to go into uh, life full on sprint. You know, you're going to crawl into life. So and that's what you got to do at the end of the day, man. You've got to you've got to crawl into it. You've got to baby step your way, way into things and establish the need. You need to find a job, right? You need to find a vehicle that you're going to get you to the job, right? You're going to work your way up from that point, whether it's a promotion or towards a different job, but you've at least got to establish a need. You need a job to pay bills. You know, you've got to start start small, you guys. But I, I tell you this, life is going to challenge you no matter what. And that, that, you don't even that, need that, a job to pay bills. That, you need money. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> that's the need, right? That's the need in your life, man. It's, it's the, the challenge is a need. <laughs> I, I swear to God to you, man. A challenge is a need, right? And what you want is what you're ultimately going to get at the end. That's when you're finally going to get Here, to that goal. Here's here's how you simplify it. If you just be grateful for everything that you already have, everything that you need will be provided. When we learn how to just be grateful for the house that I have and you take care of the little bit of home that you got and you take care of the car you want, then when it's time for you to get another one, it'll be provided. I think I think that's definitely we be talking about so much what we need or what we want. We're not grateful for what we have. Like you talk about how much you take care of your house. I remember not too long ago on Facebook, 
you showed the picture of the however many year, 10, 12, 7, 8 year difference from when you first got the house to what the house looks like now. You just said it, 1600. I got what we needed so we could afford. We wanted space. Now it's everything that I wanted because I got to make it my own. You know what I'm saying? And people that delayed gratification, we need to want it right now. You know, so when you be grateful for what you already have, it'll help you get everything that you need and some of the stuff that you want because it helps you be responsible. It shows that you're responsible and you can take care of, as we were talking about in here with the credit card, you become, you become, I just, the lender, not the borrower. That's, yeah, that's not exactly. where I was going, but it's biblical. But yeah. when you come in can control of it, when you take control and say, you know what, like you said, I'm just going to be grateful that whatever I did at work today was the best that I had to give. And that's all I had to give them. I couldn't give them no more. I'm good with that. That feels a lot better when you go home and you get out the car as opposed to, man, I hope I did everything I could do at work. And I did this a little better. What else did I have? And then you get home and you get to work. You can't, I mean, you get home, you can't focus at home because you're still thinking about work. So yep. are you grateful for just, man, I'm great. I, I'm glad I had a good day at work. I'm glad I got this done. I got that done. I told this employee that I listened to that, man, it was a good day. And I got, man, I'm glad I made it through that traffic. You know, that traffic can be crazy in Houston. Now I'm at home. My wife, now I'm just going to chill with my wife. Like when you grateful for what you have, then you get more. It's just like when we would be grateful for when the mission was over. Man, I just want to go back, get home, get the child. I just, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, big Sarge. One of the things that I sat there thinking of, man, uh, and it also relates to this is, man, you got to prioritize your needs, right? Yeah. You got to prioritize your needs, right? To get to work, you know, you, you need to get a job, right? But you got to prioritize to get that job, but you also got to prioritize on how am I going to get to work? Again, it's that vehicle, right? Mm -hmm. Because in most most places gonna require, hey, can you get to work in on time and stuff like that, right? Prioritize. You know, you're gonna have to get a job first to be able to afford a vehicle. So you've got to also be able to establish, prioritize what how you're gonna get to work and how what you're gonna do, right? What's closest to you. Again, there may be a job that you want. But it's uh, but what you need is to get a job to where you can afford afford a vehicle to get to the job that you want, or maybe it's a, you know, a uh, you know maybe there's certain things that you're looking for in life, but you gotta prioritize what's gonna get you to that want out of your needs. That's right. That's very important, man. You you definitely have to have an outline, a strategy, a structure, or some priorities in order to know what you're going after. It's kind of like a uh, a budget. You know, you prioritize. This is what's okay. important. This what, is what. What's it called in military terms, Big Sarge? What's it called when, when we sit down? And we uh, strategize. Oh man, oh, hold on. Let me think about it. You ain't talking. See, I'm thinking of a full blown op order when we prioritize and strategize. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You yeah, have your operation order. order. You, you get your the order. order. This is what's about to happen. This is what needs to get done. And then you put the operations order together. How you gonna do it? So yeah, that's, that's exactly yeah, that's it. Well, yeah, man, it's, it's it's going on 10 p.m. here around these parts. We thank y'all for staying, staying with us and staying tuned with us. We appreciate that. Yes, uh, I don't, don't want to miss this. Rinka said you have to pay attention and learn from mistakes. Absolutely correct. Definitely have to pay attention and learn from mistakes. Is that is that salt or a shot? Uh, at salt, then oh. now a drink. Oh, okay. Uh, we thank y'all for tuning in tonight for speak grunt grunt speak on this wonderful Father's Day day Father's Day day. I hope all the fathers out there had a good time and you got to free and relax your mind. Did anybody have to cook on Father's Day or did somebody cook for you? Is that a tradition around your way? I had a couple of things I wanted to get to, but we didn't because, you know, on Mother's Day, you usually go out or you cook or you cater. On Father's Day, sometimes the dad is on the grill himself. But anyhow, hopefully you had a good Father's Day. Not too much hard work tomorrow. 
you celebrating Juneteenth. Have a great Juneteenth, too. Be careful in everything that you do and everything that you grow through that's going to change you. Speak grunt. It'll help you get through to become a better version of you. That's it. That's all I got for you. Whiskey Charlie, you got something to say before we say bye? Hey, you guys, just uh, make sure you're proud. Hey, have a, you know, first of all, have a great Father's Day. I hope uh, your Father's Day went amazing, you guys. Hey, appreciate every single one of you. Uh, make sure you're, uh, you know, we touched on so many, I guess you would say, different type of topics, yeah. really. Tonight. <laughs> we touched on a lot. We touched on a lot. But, hey, I appreciate you all that are watching, you're following. Hey, if you're sharing, I appreciate it. Make sure you share. Uh, but, uh, man, make sure you are prioritizing what you need. So you can get what you want in life. You guys prioritize what you need to reach what you want in life. So, but outside of that, Big Sarge, that's all I got. Whiskey Charlie, we're going to have to look that up and see if that's already been a quotable because you've said that probably about 50 times. That's, that's one of your phrases that you say pretty often. You need to look that up and see if that's already a quotable. And if not, that's a uh, Whiskey Charlie quotable T-shirt right there. That's just Big Sarge, and there we go. That's how I see it. Well, this has been Grunt Speak. Speak, Grunt. When we come through and we speak to you, we hope that you speak to us too, and we thank you for speaking to us too because that's what you've been on here doing. So uh, everybody welcome, but everybody cannot and will not be a member. 11 Bravo, 11 Charlie, 11 Alpha Officer Crew. 0311 Marine Corps, you know what to do. We appreciate you. We salute you. Happy Father's Day again to the fathers, too. Y'all have a blessed and wonderful night. Peace. Bye-bye.